the females in front of the tail, they got that big pot belly right now. Just full of eggs, and then the, any smaller one will be a male. Mm. So if you see a real big one and a smaller one swimming next to it, it's usually a male and a female swimming together. That was there you got here. Well, this is our fish barrier for Wedge Creek. I'm getting bigger. This fish barrier stops all the carp from migrating from Fountain Lake uh, and going into Wedge Creek. How does it work? Uh, it pulses electricity into the water, and uh, fish really don't like electricity. They're really sensitive to it, and it just uh, stuns them a little bit or even turns them around. Okay, this is uh, one of the first days in May, and what's happening here? Yeah, the, uh, the water temps are finally where the uh, carp are starting to migrate for the time of year. Uh, this is Wedge Creek, where Wedge Creek enters into Fountain Lake. The, okay. uh, the temperatures, the water temps are just right, and uh, the time of day is correct for the carp to start their annual uh, spawning migration. And what are they attempting to do? Well, they're trying to get upstream to the uh, upstream wetlands that are up from Fountain Lake uh, to spawn, reproduce. And your observations here, you came out this morning and went wow. Huh? Yep, wow, there's some huge carp, some big females here. Um, they're stuck at the barrier. They can't get upstream anymore because of our uh, electric fish barrier. Is this the first year for this, really, to be effective? or? Well, it's the first year we've turned it on, actually. Um, We've had it had the fish barrier in place uh, for two years now, but this is the first spring we've actually turned it on. And um, so, what will be the net effect of this? Well, the effect is that uh, the carp can't get upstream to those spawning wetlands, and they'll have to spawn in Fountain Lake itself. And because there's so many predator fish in in Fountain Lake. Uh, the carp really don't have that effective of a spawn if they have to spawn in the, the lake itself. And the uh, effect of that, or what is your goal to have with this in place? What, will, what effect will it have on that carp uh, habitat, or what do you call it, species, I should say? Right. Well, the, the carp population will go down, and uh, the carp won't affect the water quality in Fountain Lake as much anymore. This fish barrier is something to be careful about too, isn't it? Right, it is. There's some signs that I put up now, um, and then there's some safety gates on the upstream and downstream end. Um, we're really hoping people don't go get too close to them because um, there is uh, safety. Uh, degrade water quality in our lakes. They, they root up the, uh, the bottom, the sediment, um, which releases phosphorus into the water, which causes our big algae uh, growth. Now they also eat the aquatic vegetation that fish and wildlife need for uh... Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's still carp on the upstream side too. We haven't completed our uh, upstream fish kill yet, so there will be fish on the upstream side. But as long as we can stop the bulk of those fish from coming out of Fountain Lake, we're still doing, you know, we're still accomplishing our goals. Well, this this run will probably last uh, maybe a month. You know, the, the fish are triggered by water temperature and length of day, you know, photo period. So, you know, roughly a month is, is all it'll 